channel. Um, I have just re-recorded the Socialite accordion wallet um, as um, a few people have told me I've uploaded. When I uploaded it, I missed some bits. I'm really, really sorry about that. So I have just redone another video. Um, and I just thought I'd show you, this is the one I've just done. And it's really, really lovely. I've got to go around and collect, get off all the bits of um, thread. But I've done it in vinyl, vinyl, and then inside I have just done quilting cotton um, with G700 and a bit of fleece. And I think it's 250 for the heavier interfacing. Um, and I really like it. Maybe I could have added a bit of um, Peltex into here. I did use Thermaline um, and it's quite a squishy wallet. Um, but I love it. And um, this is the one I did in the other video, which is all waterproof canvas, um, even in the pockets and it was really really hard and actually compared to the two this is so heavy before i've even added anything to it so i didn't add any interfacing i don't think but it's much much stiffer and also a much heavier wallet before you even put anything in it this was the first one i did which was put the vinyl inside pocket which actually does make quite a lot of difference. I just used cotton and some heavier interfacing in the middle here. Um, and it's the, the, the pocket doesn't stay quite so um, well. Um, so you could put thicker in here to just give those bits um, a stand. But on the whole, this was much easier to sew together because my materials weren't so thick. And I wish you could feel the weight difference between them. It, it, it's unbelievable. So um, even between these two. Um, so yeah, I really hope you enjoyed this video and it helps you. Um, and hopefully this time I don't miss any bits out. All right then, if you like this video, please like and subscribe my, to my channel. Um, I'd really appreciate it. Thank you. Um, ID flaps, we want to take our pattern piece E and I folded it in half the wrong side. Grab the template. Now I'm doing this slightly different to the pattern because she says to draw it and mark it for the four corners and draw the four rectangles separately. I am going to do it folded in half and then cut together simply because I can't necessarily line them up again so this way I know they'll be lined up flat together so grabbing you just want to mark you've cut out the inside of your pattern you just want to cut and draw along lines and now you will grab take that off and re clip it just so that it stays together grab my board and I'm going to grab my craft knife that's a ruler
So now you've got your four holes and they're all on the, should hopefully be in the same place. And you only have to cut it out twice instead of four times. So now what you want to do is you want to flip your fabric over and you are going to want to draw a rectangle around the box with the seam allowance with the allowance given in the pattern scissors and clip as close as you can into that corner And then what you want to do is with a bit of double sided tape or glue, just as if you were doing a zipper um, tape, and fold it along that line. No raw edges showing. Yep. I'm getting in a gluey mess. Don't I always? I'll give those a quick press so I've given it a press and I've just folded it in half on itself so it's now the right side out we're now going to get a piece of clear vinyl and we're going to put it through the I'm going to open it up and I'm going to pop it inside Right, 
are going to sew around the edges. Teflon foot here would be is really useful just in case you are going over the um, clear vinyl. those all the way in. Now we are going to top stitch down from the edge the widths that in the pattern. We are now going to get our flap lining piece. We are going to place it on top, like so, and we are going to baste around the edges. properly just cut off the larger bits now we have our ID flap now we are going to top stitch we're going to make the individual slots for the cards now again we're going to do the width specified in the pattern and I'm going to start here making sure to remember to back stitch again just to reinforce that corner I'm going to do the same on this side. We want to put our measure up, put a dot, and we're going to put the mail where the mail so pop a little hole. This is an air soluble pen. Because 
If you want to make them bigger, you can't make them smaller. Dab of free check as it's cotton. Pop the prongs in. I sometimes put Decaville heavy behind it, but there's a lot of interfacing in this, so it's already quite secure. Okay, after an epic battle, which I didn't think you'd necessarily want to watch me do, I've got it on. I've got the zipper, the magnetic on. So now we're going to finish the flap. So we need our main piece of our main top one and it's got the um, interface attached so we want to pop right sides together we're just going to stitch along them using the seam allowance in the bottom in the pattern So we are only going to stitch this bit, we're not stitching across there. Put my stitch length back down. Sorry, I don't think I can get the light out of my machine. Okay. So now we've sewn around there. Now I'm going to trim the seam allowance down. I'm going to use my pinking shears because I like to do that. It also gives it makes it easier when you go to turn it on the corners um, but you can always just do cut it with scissors and then do some V's around the corners now we're going to give that a turn it thing and there you have Give that a good finger press because I'm not going to put it near the iron because I've got vinyl on the back and I've got the clear vinyl there and knowing my luck I will melt the vinyl because I have been known to do that in the past. <laughs> Tips. 
just on there just to hopefully help it turn keep it nice right. right now we're going to attach the flap so I've put the main pattern piece underneath the curvy bit is the bottom I've also written top just on this bit so that I remember you want to find the center also mark your flap placement there and you can get rid of that piece now you're going to want to put this on turn it over the right way it's fine because you can just transfer the marks and you are going to place your completed panel top panel between those two marks you just copied from there. I do the outsides first and then I just pin along Now we're going to stitch across. Right. So we're now going to set that aside. Mommy, do you want a coffee? Yeah, I didn't drink the last one. Never do. No, but I'm I don't recording. think the door's properly closed. Yeah, I'm recording. Okay. Two zipper tabs. And so what you need to do is you need to use a number three zip, not a number five. So what I do is my zip's too long is I'm going to just put the bar tack on the end to get rid of the metal bits there. Grab my lighter. Now what I've done, oh. now what I've done, it's slightly different than in the pattern, but I've taken my tab and I've folded it over by about a quarter of an inch and then folded it and then I just pop it on to there. You want don't want to but you want don't want the zip all the way to the end of the fabric. And then it is to be a specific size in the pattern. So what I do is with that end on I mark to where that would make it the end of the pattern, the, the, the finish length including my zipper tab so now all I'm going to do is slide my zipper tab on right to the end because I know that will make it to what I need draw a line and I'm going to cut about a quarter of an inch off that and then slide that in to the line I drew and then give it a stitch it in place and by doing the zipper tabs like this you're removing the zip the tape from the bolt so you've done your two zips for now so we just want to pop them to one side and we're going to put our magnetic snap on right so we want to find the middle And 
and then we want to measure up the distance in the pattern and what I do is when I've found the middle I'd line up the middle of this and then go up the distance whatever the distance is so that I know that when I put the mark this bit here makes the middle grab that line the two holes up hopefully this one goes in a bit easier than the last one because the last one was a little bit of a problem the seam ripper Oh, it doesn't want to rip. Okay, we've now got our magnetic press on there. So now we've got that, we are going to put in our zipper. So we need one of our zips and our... Right, now we're going to add the bottom zipper pocket. So we're going to need one of our completed zippers, our D pieces and our front main panel as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to find the middle to the zipper I'm using a permanent marker in bronzy colour just so that I can see it. Just in the seam allowance. This is a number three zipper, so we will you will probably need to go down to your zipper foot because it's quite narrow. So what we're going to do then is we're going to take our main panel piece A and leave it right side up. Next we're going to take the zipper and we're going to put it wrong side up. Now if we want it to unzip this way okay and maybe I'm going to try and make sure that the zip opens this way but I can't work out whether it goes that way. So I'm putting my zipper head facing this way. I'm going to line up my middle and my dot. So my fabric is the right side up. My zipper is the wrong side down. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give that a very small stitch along um, so that we're not dealing with lots of layers and if you struggle then this is a way to just be able to put it down and then do the next step Right, just so everybody knows, yep, so if you want your zip to open left to right, when you stick it on, you want your, your zip that way, to your, to your right. Now, we're going to take our piece D, then place it wrong side down.
Now we're going to sew this, when you place this on top, the D is the wrong side down, but mine's got no pattern on it, so it's not really a, an issue. So I'm going to put it from, I'm going to I'm going to pin on the that side and pin on that side as you can see it looks oh it's not going to fit if you give it a wiggle and a jiggle you'll find that it will fit along quite nicely um so yeah that's what i tend to do sometimes is just actually um do that now you can flip it over um and now we're going to sew it with the true actually we'll do this side just remember that the zip, where the zip is, you need to move the zip out of the way. And we're going to sew along there with the seam allowance in the pattern. Coming up to the zip head, lift your foot, move the zip. both pieces away from the fold I'm going to move both layers away from the zip So we want to make sure that all of them are away and then we want to measure in the distance required on the pattern from the tab and what we're going to do now is we're going to top stitch but we're going to only top stitch between the two marks that we've just made so making sure that the fabrics moved out of the way and nicely pulled down if you've used just fabric you can use an iron but I'm not putting an iron near it. And I'm going to stitch along here just until we get to our mark we made. So now we are Going to place the lining fabric so now we're going to need this bit we've just done our lining pocket piece a our second d piece and what we're going to do is we're going to line the center marking here with the center marking that we should have made in the middle and line those two up Right. and then what we're going to do is put this bit along here so what I'll do is I'll just do a very short stitch along here just to baste it Moving your zipper head out of the way really helps as well. It means you don't get such wavy lines in your zippers. So face that down. So now you should have your main panel, your liner. So when you've done it, you're going to have your zip like that. But what we need to do now 
is switch it back down and we need to get our D piece and we need to place it across the top. So we're making a pocket now. So pin on one end, pin on the other, and then Wiggle jiggle it does help if you're thinking oh it's a bit dingy to just do your zipper up when you pin it and you've got your nice tension okay so that's fine so now let's move the zip so I can sew it and now we're going to sew it with the seam allowance stated in the pattern towards the zip so lift your foot move your zip and because we basted it one layer down you've got one less layer to worry about so now we're going to move these two apart making sure these bits are also moved out because you don't want to zip them together. Make sure they are all nice and flat. And again, we're going to top stitch just like we did before, starting and stopping the distance stated up the on the pattern. I'm just going to eyeball from where the other side is. So now you've got your starts of your pocket, you've got your lining main panel piece and your front main panel piece. So now what we want to do is make, we're going to join the lining panel to the front main panel. So what we want to do is we're just going to stitch along the bottom here. So you want to line up that corner and then line up that corner. And then what you want to do is, see this here, the zipper tape, you want to push it down towards the lining panel so it'll be inside I put a, stick, a clip there so it's together and it's pointing down so again you're going to pinch it and point it downwards and then what we're going to do is making sure that that's down, that's down. I'm going to start where our stitch is finished last time, making sure that's all nicely under our needle. And we're literally going to sew to the end. Take a little bit of jiggling, a little bit of juggling, but you'll get there. side so making sure that these are pinched down
now your pocket should be enclosed right so that's your now your pocket closed Now we're going to finish the pocket lining off so we're going to just probably said to do it somewhere in the pattern and i've missed it so we're just going to turn over a quarter of an inch sorry that was my son just bringing me some coffee um so fold over about a quarter of an inch and then just pop a clip and then what we're going to do is we are going to sew down these sides here we're leaving this bit open. Now we have a pocket. What we need to do is unzip it. You'll be glad you've done that in a minute. So you need to unzip it, and now we're going to attach the rest of it across. So we're just going to pin the, two, the front and the lining together. So now we're going to sew along these three lines using the seam allowance in the pattern. going to get thick in a minute especially depending on what you've used so you might need a um, pump jumper so now sewing over the flap to start and stop. Now I'm going to grab your thinking shoes and we are going to clip it down. Especially paying special attention to the corners because the more bulk you can remove now the easier it is to turn. And this is going to be a bit tough because it's where your um, flap is. Again, if you haven't got pinking shears, you can use um, just cut it and then add some V's little slips snips to the corners right. so now this 
this is where you've hoped you've left your zipper undone. I have not before. We are now going to pull the wallet through the zipper pocket, which is why we didn't do the bottom. This this wallet is very it's a nice wallet to sew. It's a lovely wallet to sew. You just have to be mindful of the fabrics that you use because they can make it much more difficult um, for you to actually do sew together. Your little pointy thing, point out the corners. Um, in my first video that I did this in, I used waterproof canvas and vinyl and yeah, that was really tough. Um, so you just need to think about what you're going to do. But I'm going to go and give that a quick press and I'll be back. So now we have got our inside pocket, which we will now need to um, close up. Close up the seam allowed there. Close up the right. I'm going to close up the bottom hole. is we are going to scary scary we're going to top stitch across here we're going to top stitch across here and then we're going to top stitch but we're just going to top stitch these bits that haven't been done from earlier so we'll top stitch here from here to here and up along and then from there to there a bit thicker along here again especially if you have used um, thicker fabrics in your flap Now you I'm gonna set this aside now and we're gonna make the card pockets. Okay, the card slots PC. Right, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the measurements that are in the book and you're going to mark down and make the sections. Bear in mind, and I'm only saying this because I just spent five minutes trying to work it out. There is a difference between the top measurement and then the subsequent three measurements and then a different one for the bottom. Bear that in mind. So when you've, when you've taken your measurements and you've drawn your lines, you're gonna to want to pinch the bottom one wrong sides together and iron it. This, the next one, wrong sides together and iron it. Next one, wrong sides together and iron it. 
Now this one, and I've done it wrong, you're going to want to flip over and you want to iron right sides together. I've just changed that one. So now what you want to do is you want to collect these one and just give it a top stitch. Then top stitch the next one and then the next one The next one we're going to top stitch but we're not actually going to top stitch it together we're just going to put a top stitch along it and then you are going to bring up the bottom one so it is the specified distance between them because you're making your card slots now always take your time with this this bit because it can make all the difference to whether your pockets are what your um, pockets look like Same. Right, so once that's done, take it back to the iron and give it a good iron. Right, just to recap on the card slots, you will make your lines according to the sizes on the pattern then you iron wrong sides together wrong sides together wrong sides together right sides together Right, so now you want to take your two completed calf slots and you want to base down the edges to stop them from moving. Just down the edges of the... So once you've pasted down the edges of your card slots, you are going to place both of the completed card slots and we're going to align the bottom raw edges. We're going to align the bottom raw edges and we're going to stitch across the bottom with the steam seam allowance in the pattern. Back down to construction stitch, then Now we're going to press open the seam. We'll take it back over to the ironing board. We're going to press open the seam and then we're going to get our bit of iron on interfacing and we are going to put it over the card slots. So there is no interfacing on the card slots up until this point. So we will then go, so I'm going to go and give it an iron, an iron down 
the seam and then I'm going to put this bit on top and I will be right back with you. Right. So just making sure it fits within the seam allowance, this seam there. Right. Okay, so I have ironed down my seam in the middle. I have put my interfacing on. I'm just giving that a second to cool down. So now we're going to want to bring these two together up here and we are going to want to stitch those down with the seam allowance in the pattern. to make sure that this middle seam is just where we are. I'm going to go and give that another press and I'll be right back. I've let that cool down so now I'm going to bring it through the side and this is where it might have felt strange doing that stitch. You want to align the two centre points and we're going to go and give it another, once the two centre bits are aligned, so I've lined the two seams up and I've given it a press, so now we have our two rows of card slot. This will be the one that's inside. So when it's all lined up nicely, then we are going to top stitch down the pockets. I'm going to do that in half. Right, so we're now going to top stitch down the centre. If it's all aligned, we're going to give it a top stitch down the centre line that we've done, just to hold everything in place. And then we are going to mark down the middle to make our card slots. Now we're going to come down the middle with the card, for the card slots. So that is your card slot finish. Give yourself a pat on the back. Well done. Right, so now we're going to add the card pockets to the main panel. So we need our main piece and we just need to fold down to create a crease. If you've used just fine, uh, fabric, you can use an iron, but we'll have to rely on finger pressing and maybe a bit of a roll from the leather roller. So you've got some nice creases and then because I can't iron it and just to encourage it I'm going to stick a couple of clips on 
just to try and help it think about where it wants to stay. Again, come over. So I'm going to do this. that stay to stay folded. Now we want to take our finished card pockets and we want to place them in the middle. Right. So we're making sure we've got an even distance up there an even distance there and then what we want to do so once we've put our card slots in what we want to do is then bring these bits over as tight as they will go they will come in to the sides of the purse tight as you can and now what we're going to do is we are going to top stitch all the way around the bag so I'm going to turn it over this way my stitch now if you've used vinyl you would definitely need to use a um, teflon foot Another moment of truth, did my card slots get caught in? Yay, they did! Woo! Yay! Excited much? Oh, I thought I wasn't recording then. I was just going to cry. Right. We are almost there. Right, so now we're 
going to fold the edges back put the clip on just because being vinyl they don't stay Now we're going to do the interior zip, so we're going to give those, give that a few minutes. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stick some more because it, more clips on it to help encourage the fold. Right, so now we're going to need our final zipper tab and our eye zipper pockets. Now, just to confuse everything, I'm doing the same colour inside and outside, but my outside pieces have got interfacing on, so my inside bits haven't. So, we are going to start with one of our main pieces with the fabric wrong side right so we're going to take our zipper and our one of our lining pieces it is purposely the zipper is shorter than the pocket it just makes it easier to put in when it comes to sewing so again see it doesn't look like it fits give it a bit of a wiggle and a pull and it can you can fit it fine. There we go. So now I'm going to just baste that into place, making sure I move the zip out of the way. not used to using zippers and things basting it and then adding the next one on is a perfectly good way of doing it and it means that if you do make a mistake you're not in too much you haven't got too many issues so these bits meet them together and then, so it makes it easier you can flip it over but I didn't do the full seam allowance I just did a, a much smaller one just to baste it on so now I will do the full seam allowance and I will sew it right so now we're going to stitch across the whole thing Allowance. Coming up to the zipper head. We folded it all in nicely. I'm going to top stitch. Okay. All along the bottom, up, up to the stitch length. And now we're going to do the same on this one. So, again, I put the mark where the zip will go just makes it that a little bit easier although on this one you can line up those two bits um, I don't need to baste it this time so pop a couple of clips on make sure 
side is the zip that point. So the zip's down the bottom this time. It's fine. Lift the zip out of the way and you can find it. It's all nice and flat. And I'm just gonna top stitch it on there again. going to do now is we are going to take the main fabric pieces so in my case the two that are interfaced because they're all the same color and then your two lining pieces match up the corners match up the bottoms And then what you're going to do is pull these down. Right, I don't know if you can see in there, they've got the tab. You want to fold that towards the lining side. So you're going to fold it towards the lining side, line up those two corners. Uh, Oh, sounds like somebody's bin's been blown over. We had um, Storm Eunice, yes, today, day before, and it's rainy and windy again today. So, um, again, you want to push that bit down towards your lining so that that, that lies, lies nice and flat. Give that a pinch. Now, if it helps, we need to leave a four inch gap for turning. If it helps to make a mark and remember, do that. I start here. Yep. Right, sew it together, back to construction then with the seam required in the pattern. Just being careful when you come up to this bit. You shouldn't be getting the zipper tabs at all. And now we are going to grab our thinking shears and we are going to um, turn it. 
I'm going to leave this bit here because it will just make it easier for turning but I'm going to make sure I clip the corners well just makes less bulk in the corners when you go to turn them and also when you go to sew the final seams together No. At this point, remember to leave your zip unzipped. I'll be back as soon as I've done it. Okay, well, I've managed to get the zip undone. So now we will pull it all through the lining. And, oh, yes. Don't forget to unzip your zipper before you sew all the corners together. I knew things were going too well. Now you want to poke out the corners. And you'll notice that the tabs aren't in fabric which is what you want because it will make it easier for when you turn it. <laughs> 